the Grassroot Institute of Hawaii at the Climate Change Conference in New York with Mr. Stanley Goldenberg. Uh, Mr. Goldenberg, where are you from? I'm from Miami. I work with the Hurricane Research Division of NOAA, the National Oceanic, Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. For people who aren't familiar with NOAA, um, what do they do? Well, NOAA uh, handles the research and operational uh, application of the oceans, really the oceans and the atmosphere. And uh, they deal with the National Weather Service and the fisheries and all sorts of different things that affect the weather forecast and the things to do with the oceans. And uh, what do you do there? Uh, I work with the Hurricane Research Division and I specialize in studying hurricane climate fluctuations. I also fly into hurricanes on our Hurricane Hunter aircraft uh, to collect data and uh, interact with uh, hurricane scientists from all over the world. Uh, could you tell us why you're here at Heartland's um, International Climate Change Conference? Well, here because I got invited to speak. And okay. I'm very, very interested in hearing as much as possible on the other side of the global warming issue. What a lot of people don't know is that the media has, the mainstream media has almost 100% censored any of the research, any meetings like this, coming from the other side of people who do not believe we are now seeing, or will be shortly seeing, catastrophic man-made global warming. There are numerous, numerous world-class scientists uh, who do not agree with that. And not that you have to be world-class for your opinion to count, but there's many, many high-level scientists, uh, professors at universities, people who have published you know, hundreds of papers. Uh, and even at this conference, you have some very, very prestigious, world-renowned scientists who are stating very clearly, uh, number one, that they do not believe we're seeing this catastrophic global warming. And number two, that the uh, details of impacts of climate change, whether it be global warming or something else, are greatly, greatly exaggerated or distorted in the, in the media and even in the scientific literature. So I'm, I'm here to both share uh, my expertise with others concerning hurricanes and global warming link, uh, but also to hear from others uh, in their areas of expertise. Now, um, a man named Al Gore has made the claim in his film that uh, hurricanes are linked to temperature rises, or the increase in the number of hurricanes are linked to temperature rises. As a meteorologist, can you shed some light on this claim? Well, first of all, people need to understand there's not a single scientist that I know of at the National Hurricane Center, the Hurricane Research Division, the Joint Typhoon Warning Center, and numerous other places that really believes that there's a link between global warming and hurricane activity. Now, are there scientists out there that do believe that and publish papers on that? Yes, but most of us believe their studies are flawed because they're improperly using the historical database. An important thing with you realizing when you use a historical database, you have to understand how the data were collected, uh, are there any deficiencies with the data, uh, have the observational techniques changed, I have to get technical for a minute, but we have to scrutinize all that when we're utilizing uh, the data. What Al Gore does not understand that the issue of why we have more or less hurricane activity, and it happens to be my specialty for many years, and I've published papers in that area, it's very, very well referenced papers and well acknowledged papers, that he doesn't understand that it's a lot more complex than ocean temperatures. If ocean temperature goes up, that doesn't mean all of a sudden you have more hurricane activity. There's different things that cause the ocean temperatures to go up. That's a real key issue. You can have ocean temperatures go up because of maybe a long-term steady rise. People have shown that that's actually related to what's called higher vertical shear, the difference between the upper and lower level winds. Stronger vertical shear rips hurricanes apart. So actually that long-term increase, it can reduce hurricane activity. And some people have done published research on that. However, when we have what's called a multi-decadal cycle, and that's where I've published uh, in Journal of Science and other people have published elsewhere, is that's where the Atlantic gets slightly warmer for several decades and then slightly cooler for several decades. That's associated with changes in the atmospheric circulation. And when the Atlantic gets slightly warmer, the vertical shear, which is so important for hurricane activity, goes down, it gets lower, and you have more hurricanes. When it gets cooler, you have higher vertical shear. But that's a clearly known cycle that we can trace back into back to the 1800s and even through certain proxy records back to the 1600s. So this is a clear cycle when it 
Uh, switch back to the warm phase in 1995, the hurricane activity went way up. It was not a surprise to us. It's clearly outlined in our paper. Regrettably, we think it's still in that high hurricane. It's still in that high activity era for right. hurricane activity. And that could continue even another decade or so. Now, we're just talking about the Atlantic. Every basin, hurricane basins in the Pacific and the uh, West Pacific, every basin is a little bit different. Why is it so hard to get the media to report on these um, scientific conclusions? Well, the interesting thing is uh, they've reported fairly well on our conclusions that global warming is not affecting hurricane activity. The reason is, in general, we're not attacking the global warming issue directly. And we know a lot of science reporters that respect us, and they're covering both sides. They'll cover the other articles when they come out. And usually there's not a problem with a lot of them. But on the overall global warming area, I can't say all there's reasons, but there, it's become a political agenda. It's become something that's taken on a life all of its own. And uh, I personally have spoken to reporters and tried to educate them that there is another side to this. The interesting thing with science is not every scientific issue can be settled just clear cut. We see bickering going back and forth between scientists, and that's a good thing because it says, as iron sharpens iron, so a man right. sharpens the countenance of his friend. And you can get up and give a talk. Sometimes we have people come down to our lab who know that we have a lot of expertise. And they want to present their results in front of us so that we'll rip it apart if there's something wrong. And so that's how the whole scientific community works. Uh, and what the reporters are not letting people know for whatever reason, like I said, because it's taken on a life of its own, is that there's a lot of controversy in this area, that there is another side. There are scientists that are publishing, publishing and speaking heavily against some of the global warming issues that they're saying. Regrettably, uh, as most people might know, the media does have some level of bias. And as much as they say there's not, there's bias. Every reporter has a worldview, and that worldview is going to affect what they write in some way. Sure. Uh what are some sources that um, members of the public can go to, um, reliable scientific sources, um, to learn more about climate change and what's really um, causing temperature fluctuations and about um, you know, the natural causes? Natural causes. Uh, you really have to do some searching. If someone in the public wants to find out more, uh, realize that some of it's very, very technical. Uh, there's some stuff written for lay people. There's some excellent books. There's a book written by, they can look up Patrick Michaels. Roy Spencer, these are, these are scientists, these are climate scientists. Uh, a good website is Heartland, heartland.org, which put on the conference that I'm at here now. There's also a, a website called scienceandpublicpolicy.org. It's all one word, scienceandpublicpolicy.org. And there's an article on there that states the 35 mistruths in an inconvenient truth. And it's a detail of some real problems in Al Gore's movie. In fact, what a lot of people don't know, just that they're showing the Al Gore Inconvenient Truth film in almost all the schools in the United States, without any disclaimers whatsoever, I guarantee you as a scientist, mm -hmm. it's not political as a right. scientist, there's some real problems in that movie, but if you, in, they were doing them in schools in England, and a truck driver decided to sue the schools and said this is political and it's scientifically inaccurate, right. and Lord Monckton, former advisor to Margaret Thatcher, who's going to speak here, at the conference right here, yes, right. Uh, he helped this guy. They challenged it in court. It can no longer be showed in the, shown in the schools of England right. without listing 11 scientific disclaimers and inaccuracies. And there's more than that, but these are the ones they were able to get through the court. So people have to realize they're getting misinformation. They can look on the other side. Uh, and sometimes just doing a web search on global warming, uh, is it a hoax? Uh, is global warming real? Things like that. They'll come up with some very, very interesting articles. The, the pro-global warming side is very, very vocal and uh, very organized and has a lot of funding. We sometimes talk about the, the non-global warming side being heavily funded. They're much, much more heavily funded. Right. Universities, that's the cash cow for grant money in the research area is anything to do with global warming. And uh, so there's a, lot, there's a lot of stuff people can then look into and kind of educate themselves, at least hear the other side. So I challenge reporters and scientists to speak out more and more and speak out the truth of this area. Great. Thank you so much. Okay.